I'm a trained special effects makeup artist, so I love to make monsters, as you can see. I think it's turned out fairly well. So we will start with the beauty part, and um, I hope you enjoy it. So I've already done my base and my brows, as you can see. And now I'm just laying down a very light base all over the lid and then packing on a lilac coloured shadow just up to the socket line. And now I'm putting a very light brown into the socket line just to start to build up that socket line. And then going back over with a slightly darker brown tone just to build the socket line up even more. You must remember to blend, blend, blend. Um, and now I'm going underneath with the same light colour that I started the socket line with. Um, as I said, remember to blend, blend, blend as you go along. You can never blend too much. It just gives a really nice seamless finish. And now I'm going back into the socket line with more of the darker brown. And again, just blending away with that larger brush and going underneath the eye with the darker brown just to intensify it a bit more and again blend 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 don't forget to blend now i'm going into the socket line with a sort of a dark navy blue color just to really intensify that even more and give a nice smoky effect and blending as always and there's me dancing away to my 80s music and basically i just keep working in the socket line and oh i'm having a bit of a sing there um, and now I'm putting some of that lighter colour that I started off with. Oh, a bit of a sing there to um, walk like an Egyptian. Um, I'm putting a bit of that lighter colour underneath the brow just to bring out the brow bone a little bit more. And again, just working back into that crease just to build up the intensity. You can build it up as much as you like or as little as you like, depending on what you prefer. And blend, 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 folks. Blend away and back underneath and blending with a bit more of that darker navy shade just to intensify it and bring it in line with the top of the eye and now i'm going in with liquid liner which i pretty much wear every day i love it and liquid liner takes a little bit of practice so don't lose heart if you can't get it straight away just keep on practicing girls or boys um, and you will get it eventually especially the wing part um, I will do a more detailed tutorial on liquid eyeliner. Um, a bit of a sing there again. I do like my 80s music, which is what I'm listening to in the background. Um, yeah, I'll do a more detailed liquid liner um, tutorial at some point because it can be a little bit tricky and there are some ways to make it a little bit easier for you too. Um, so, as you can see, the eye is now really come together. Oh, another quick sing there with my microphone, which is actually my liquid eyeliner. Now I'm curling my lashes and um, ready for mascara. And just using a dark brown mascara on my upper lashes and also my lower lashes before I put my liquid eyelashes. No, not liquid eyelashes, fake eyelashes. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, I didn't film that part because it took a while so I cut it out but again I will do a more detailed fake eyelash tutorial and now I'm just lining my lips with a neutral liner um, obviously only half of my lips because I'm only doing half my face as you know because the other half is going to be a monster and now I'm going over with just a fuchsia pink lipstick which is one of my go-to colours which I absolutely love um, and just going back over that liquid liner a little bit just to cover up the bits where you can see the glue on the eyelashes and there we go that is your beauty side done and dusted the pretty part of the tutorial we're now on to my favorite bit the scary bit um so this is how you do the scary side of the face. I know it already looks pretty scary without the makeup, but hey, no nasty comments under the video, please. Right, so I'm just muting my to music and I'm taking some Ben Nye Scar Wax with a spatula and I'm just going to put it on the back of my hand just to warm it up a little bit because it makes it a bit easier to use. Now I'm taking some rigid 
collodion, um, liquid collodion. This is great for making scars or any indentations in the skin because you literally paint it on, dry it off like you can see me doing here, and it literally dips the face in. Obviously it works better on softer areas of the face, such as the cheeks, although it does work as well on harder areas. Um, the one thing I will say about rigid collodion is it if it's in parts of the face where it moves a lot it can start to lift after a while so if you are going to be wearing a makeup for a long time say at a party or something like that then it is best to keep it on the less animated areas of the face so i'm just building it up um, across my face where the chelsea smile is going to be and also on my lip area just to make it look a bit sort of gnarly um, and also just going at my face there the more layers you put on the deeper the indentations will be and now I'm going back to my scar wax, just ready to build up that Chelsea smile area of the makeup. And if you use a little bit of moisturiser, that helps you blend it into the skin, because it can be a little bit tricky and fiddly. Um, so you just sort of play around with it and practice with it. You can always scrape it off and put it back in the pot if you don't want to waste it. Um, so I'm just building up both sides of the Chelsea smile around my mouth and up my face and just using the spatula which I've also got a little bit of moisturiser on just to blend that into my skin. Um, like I say this can take a little bit of time um, so just be patient with it and just blend 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 like you did with the socket in the first part of the video. Um, you can use a little bit of something a bit thicker like Vaseline or a lip balm if you need to blend it away a little bit easier. Now you can see I'm using some liquid latex with a cotton bud and I'm just painting that over the top of the wax just to keep it in place. In hindsight probably what I should have done, oops, uh oh, dropped my latex, just one moment folks interlude listen to some um, lift music oh and now you can see my lovely glamorous tracksuit bottoms with my knickers showing over the top oh the glamour the glamour this is what it's like when you're filming a special effects tutorial you don't want to get your clothes messed up and now you can see the incredible moving chair that seems to just move on its own oh and i'm back i've just cleaned up all the latex from all over my carpet and from all over my laptop so yeah tip from the top there do not spill your latex so anyway as I was saying in hindsight probably what I should have done is cut the oh 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 another interlude there this is one of my favorite 80 songs has just come on which is together in electric dreams by Phil Oakley I love that song as you can see from my dancing there um yeah anyway I shall try again third time lucky what I was trying to say is I should, in hindsight, really have cut into the Chelsea Smile before I painted the latex over because it did give me a little bit of trouble because the latex was over the top so it was hard to cut into with the spatula, which is what you can see me doing here. Even with a little bit of lip balm on, which was the pink stuff I held up, it still dragged a little and it was a bit fiddly and I had to stick bits that back down with latex, as you can see. So yeah, another tip from the top there cut into your wax before you put the latex over. Now you just need to wait for the latex to dry. So I cut that bit out obviously because you don't want to sit there watching me dry stuff. And now I'm just going in with a dark grey non shimmery eyeshadow that's very important it must be matte. And just going around my eye and around my nose just to start to build up a bit of a sort of dead skin texture. Um, I actually used a reference picture of a really sort of gnarly, scary, creepy looking doll that I found on the internet. Um, so that's what I'm using as inspiration here. Um, oh, my hair's stuck in the latex. That's another thing you really shouldn't do because as you try and pull it out, it pulls the latex off. Um, now another tip is if you are kind of trying to build up some kind of like either skin texture like sort of moldy horrible dead look like I'm doing now if you then go back over the top with a pale foundation it will blend it into your skin a little bit more so that it looks like it's under the skin rather than sitting on top um, I'm now going in with a dark red grease paint to paint in the cut part of the Chelsea smile um, and I'm also going in with the same grease paint over the areas where I use the liquid collodion 
um, just to sort of emphasize those a bit more and bring them out um, and just blending that in with my finger to blend it into the skin and stop it looking sort of too obvious or any harsh lines um, I'm using a brighter red grease paint too just to make some areas look a bit fresher in the cut and also on the scarred areas um, going back in with some of that dark grey eyeshadow I'm using a mixture of dark grey and black actually just to sort of build up the intensity in certain areas around the mouth and the nose especially um, but also around the Chelsea smile just to make it look a little bit sort of bruised and distressed and just not nice basically because you don't want this side to look too pretty so you can just build that up as, as little or as much as you want it's down to you you know have a bit of a play with it and see what you like basically um, just going around the edges of my face and sort of blending that into my hairline and also down my neck just so my neck doesn't look too pretty because you don't want a gnarly face and a pretty neck if you can call a neck pretty that's a bit strange really isn't it um, anyway, I digress. I am going back in with some of the foundation again just to blend that into the face a little bit. This is great as well if you've built up some areas a bit too much. Like you'll normally hear makeup artists saying, you know, you can add more but you can't take away. Well, in this case, you kind of can take away. Um, so if there's some areas which you think look a little bit too dark or a bit, you know, not quite right, then you can go over with the foundation and it will help just to you know, tone those areas down a little bit. Um, now I'm just going in around the eyes with some of that same red that I used in the smile, in the Chelsea smile, and also over some of the areas of the face again just to make it a little bit, little bit more gnarly. I like that word today, gnarly. Um, and again around the Chelsea smile just to make the skin look a little bit distressed. Now I'm going in around my lips with some black grease paint and just blending that in again to make my lips look a bit dead and I'm not going to use Nali again. Um, I'm painting into my nostrils again just to make them look all sort of black and hollow and nasty and again just a little bit more around my eyes building that up a bit more just to make it look extra nasty. Like I say, build this up as much or as little as you want. The world is your oyster when it comes to making your face look gnarly. And then just going back over again with some of that light coloured foundation um, just to tone some of the areas down and yeah, make it look a bit more under the skin. Now I'm going in with some Ben Knife Thick Scab Blood and my spatula. Um, I like to use my hand as a palette as you can see, so it's always covered in crap. Um, and now I'm just going in to the cut with the thick blood just to build it up and make it look really gooey and nasty um, and because it looks wet it kind of brings it to life a little bit too um, this is my, one of my favourite bits actually as adding all, adding all the blood and the gore I'm a bit strange like that oh and another tip from the top don't scratch the pretty side of your face with the grease paint covered fingers I'll stick the recipe down in the description underneath. Um, it's a great cheap way of making blood and it also means it's really safe on your skin because it's all edible stuff and it also means you can put it in your mouth as you can see there. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up underneath this video. Um, please feel free to comment. Um, I will reply to all comments or at least I will try to. Um, please feel free to subscribe there'll be plenty more makeups like this they won't always be half monster half pretty um i'll do some beauty tutorials i'll do some scary tutorials but if you like to be scared and you like to feel beautiful then yeah subscribe and there'll be more where this came from so yeah i'll um see you next time bye